In our Good Friday meditation, we meditate on those seven words that Jesus spoke from the cross as he suffered and died for you and me. Let's begin with prayer. God most holy, look with mercy on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed, be given over into the hands of the wicked, and suffer death upon the cross. Keep us always faithful to him, our only Savior, who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Who could allow whips to tear him apart? They have spikes pounded through their hands for crimes that they hadn't committed, with no malice at all, only Jesus. Who could have borne the, the jeering, the blasphemy from the soldiers, from the leaders, from the crowds, and not even given them a dirty look? Only Jesus. Who could have looked back to the very beginning of time and then even to the very end of the disgusting and despicable sinful acts, of the shameful thoughts, and still prayed, Father, forgive them, for they do not know the hell that this should be costing them, that it's costing me. Again, only Jesus. You know, the anger, the hard feelings uh, that we all have a difficult time letting go, uh, the sl slip-ups that we should have confessed but, but never did. Uh, the fears and the worries, sins, every one of them. That will happen today and tomorrow and the next. They're all gone. Gone to the cross in God's forgiveness. Jesus himself gave us his word on it. We turn to that first word from the cross and the meditation for us in Luke chapter 23. As they led him away, they seized Simon from Cyrene, who was on his way in from the country, and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A large number of people followed him, including women who mourned and wailed for him. 
Jesus turned and said to them, daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. For the time will come when you will say, blessed are the barren women, the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will say to the mountains, fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if men do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the skull, there they crucified him, along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. Jesus had his moments of glory. His feeding the 5,000 with that miracle, uh, the raising Lazarus from the dead, riding into Jerusalem in triumph, and yet at the cross, there was no one to counter uh, the doubts, the shouts, you are no king. Except for that one criminal, that one criminal who saw Jesus dying, no last-minute miracles, how could he still believe that Jesus was this king? But Jesus gave some powerful evidences. First of all, his calling on God as his father to forgive the crimes against heaven, this man's crimes. That loving and sad look and voice that Jesus had for the crowd as well as for this criminal Finally, even Jesus' courage to face death when he was afraid of facing God when he died. Yes, Jesus with his words and the way that he died opened the way for the Holy Spirit to come into this criminal's heart and to take him off the path that led to hell to instead that way that led to heaven. How about some of those that you know that you're concerned about? Concerned about them here in this world, but especially uh, when they die. What's going to happen to them? What about yourself? When, as we all have a difficult time with, sometimes believing that there is the heaven that God speaks about or that you and I are actually going to be there. That's why Jesus spoke the way that he did. That's the reason he died the way that he did. That's why he gave this clear testimony to this criminal that paradise was his and makes it so clear and certain for you and me. His second word from the cross, again recorded in Luke chapter 23. There was written, a written notice above him which read, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth. Today you will be with me in paradise. No parent should have had to go through what Mary did at the cross, watching that gory execution of her son. A Christian writer uh, put it this way, she sees him suspended but cannot touch him, sees him nailed and may not loose him. She sees him dripping blood but cannot remove it. There was also that disciple so close to Jesus, the Apostle John, 
horror struck, heartbroken, his faith shaken. And Jesus, with the weight of this world's sin on him in the delirium of death, still fought through it to tend to their brokenness. He blessed them with each other, even blessed them with a powerful promise against the despair, against the nightmares, against the horror that they were going through. Have you lost a child? A spouse? Someone that you can't live without? If you ha haven't, it, it probably will happen. Now, certainly our hearts have ached for the thousands, tens of thousands, who have died from the coronavirus alone, with no hand to hold on to. Or their survivors, having no goodbye hugs, no last words, really no closure, and yet, those who are brothers and sisters in faith with Jesus still have him. Coming to them in their darkness with his knowing, his caring, with his comforting. We hear that third word from the cross recorded in John chapter 19. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Dear woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home.
Now the daylight flees, now the ground beneath quakes as its maker bows his head. Curtain torn in two, dead are raised to life, finish the victory. Our memories are better than we give them credit for. If you experience something often enough, sing something often enough, say something often enough, it just gets beaten into your head. If I were to say to you, amazing grace, how sweet the sound, you, you could fill the rest of it in. If I said I pledge allegiance to the flag, you could continue to go. God's knit us together so that our memories are always there for us and, and oftentimes are tied to experience. So when Jesus, hanging on the cross, says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? They heard the words of a song they had sung over and over and over again. From the time many of them were this big, they had been singing Psalm 22. And with it came everything else David wrote in that psalm, that description he wrote of how the God-man would be crushed for your sin and mine, a description written a thousand years earlier and playing out before their very eyes. Two thousand years later, those words ring true. Jesus, the Son of God, crushed for your sin and mine so you and I could be drawn near to God. We read our fourth word from the cross found in Matthew chapter 27, beginning at verse 45. From the sixth hour until the ninth hour, darkness came over all the land. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, he's calling Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge. He filled it with wine vinegar and put it on a stick and offered it to Jesus to drink. The rest said, now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him. What was he doing there? There before their eyes was a creator of the universe, the one who had invented the very concept of water, our body's need for hydration. And yet there he is on the cross, going through death and experiencing that physical reality of death, of that thirstiness that comes. 
This is the one in whom we live and move and have our being. And like all of us, he's experiencing death. He's there to die our death, to pay for our sin. We read our fifth word from the cross found in John chapter 19. Later, knowing that all was now completed, and so that the scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. With all our doing, it's never done. We battle temptation time after time after time, taking on our our addictions, our tempers, our, our past grudges, our lust, our greed, on and on the list goes. All of our doing, all of our fighting, we never get to the end of it. Today we have a chance to look at the cross and hear Jesus cry out those words, it is finished, and there it's done without us doing a thing. There our sin is paid for. There are offenses removed before a holy God. There you and I are right with our Creator. We read our sixth word from the cross, found in John chapter 19. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord?
Rarely does somebody die fully conscious. Usually they slip away in unconsciousness or perhaps maybe even mumble a few weak words. But not Jesus. Yes, uh, Jesus had been beaten severely. He had lost a good deal of blood. He had been hanging from the cross for hours. His soul was under that death-crushing weight of sin. Anybody else would have been dead by that time. But not Jesus. Because Jesus was the God-man. And death had to listen to him when it would come and what it would do for him. And so Jesus, fully conscious in a loud cry that everybody could hear, cried out, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And then to show his power over death, that sun that had been darkened for the last three hours suddenly began to shine again. And that thick curtain in the temple was torn, opening to the most holy place, symbolizing how Jesus' soul was going through death into heaven. Our death may not be so nice. Death may strangle the life out of our body, but it can't touch our soul. Because Jesus has come to live there, our living, risen Lord, and brought his eternal life. And so when we die, we really won't die. No, Jesus will have our soul passing through death to heaven, into our Father's waiting hands, into that blazing light of Jesus there in heaven. We hear that last word from the cross, Luke chapter 23. It was now about the sixth hour, and darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour, for the sun stopped shining. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. We pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have revealed your saving name to the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Protect us from the assaults of the evil one and help us remain faithful to your word so that in every adversity we may stand firm in our faith and give ourselves fully to our Savior's work through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, on all sides we are surrounded by danger from wars and famine, from disease and pestilence, with the devil begrudging us every minute of our lives. Protect us from all these miseries so that your name may still be glorified in them and so that we may safely pass through them to your heavenly kingdom through Christ our Lord. Amen. We also join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.